All right, well, as a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan, I was secretly hoping this guy would fall to us. Did not quite work out that way. But the Chargers, I think, are getting a good player here. Uh, I'm a little surprised they went with Johnson as opposed to maybe some of these other tackles, which might have made more sense to me a little bit. But I like Johnson a lot. I, I don't know what the hell that Kenyon Green pick was. I think that he's that 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 felt like a rich a reach to me. I'm shocked he went before uh, Zion Johnson goes here because I think Johnson's really like just kind of one of those guys where I just feel really confident he'll be a solid player and let's get into the film talk about what I like about him and then kind of talk about the scheme fit itself so let's start off with this play what's going to happen here is that's where he is on the field and I feel like this is just a good example of kind of what Zion Johnson does this is him consistently throughout the course of games is he just wins his matchups as you see he is going to you know again get the hand placement he wants and clear up a lane for 24 to be able to run through if he wants to that's what zion johnson's job is is to block the guy who's in front of him and you know he might not be uh you know throwing guys to the side like you might see some other guys do but who cares if you're getting the, the block done that's all that matters. As you see, 24 kind of just runs straight into Johnson, kind of a weird play by him. But as a whole, by Zion Johnson himself, that was a very good play. And again, it's less about him winning, but more about him just winning consistently. Something like this is an interesting play. I think this is a good example of showing what he can do when things start to go wrong. So he's going to be blocking a player, you know, uh, on the inside right here, one-on-one. -on -one. And as you see, the player is going to you know, really uh, rush around a lot right he gets to the outside this is almost like a you know an, a speed rush type move that you'd see an edge rusher do you rarely see interior defensive linemen doing this kind of thing uh in the pass rush situation but for zion johnson he knows what to do in this scenario he is doing what you should do he has his left arm uh and right arm really both arms on the side of that clemson player to where you can just try to push him behind your quarterback very similar to how you would see a tackle try to do this johnson does pull this off well uh, pressure still came from that side but that was more on the tackle it was just kind of a weird situation to begin with but i think a good play by johnson and it kind of shows that he does have the power to not Knock somebody off to the side like that if he has to. Going over here now, so this is going to be a good example, kind of a, I feel like, more traditional guard play, like what we expect from a guard, which is being able to get to a second level and make a block. That's what we want to see guys be able to do. And there's kind of a double team, but it's not really going to end up working out that way. He's kind of supposed to, uh, you know, help out his tackle, double teaming 33, and then get over to block number five for Clemson, but uh, 33 is going to, you'll see what happens. Watch. 33 steps to the side, so Johnson says, okay, no worries, I'm going to get up and block block the guy I have to block and just look at the exact you know angle that he's blocking him at that's perfect you're blocking him completely away from the lane that your running back is trying to run through so the fact that he can get up to the second level and make those kind of blocks is good something like this is another example and it's kind of a unique example because sometimes when we see you know college what we can see is that you know these players who are at the second level are little guys which in some ways can give you some cool highlight real level plays if you're just shoving them off to the side you know like, like on display you see this clear size difference between you know zion johnson and the guy who's going to be blocking on this play but the flip side is that if you're smaller you're more nimble and you can get around uh, an offensive lineman and so these are kind of sometimes more difficult blocks than the ones you'll have to make at the nfl level just because you're not dealing with blocking guys who look like wide receivers i'm not saying that's what's happening in this scenario exactly but you know I'm, I'm not not saying that either but look at how zion johnson is able to get to the second level and make that you know has the speed to get up there and just make the block very well so again it's all about winning consistently right are you constantly doing the job that you're asked of and that's what zion johnson would do is he would constantly do what was asked of him he did not lose very frequently he lost some like he wasn't perfect and, and there's a reason why he you know isn't considered one of the top offensive line prospects and is maybe one tier below but he is my favorite of the guys who are one tier below and finally one last play just talking about the flip side of things now because yes it's cool to see a guy who can get to the second level but sometimes you're going to have to do the opposite sometimes a center is going to be the one getting to the second level meaning you're going to have to hold off the block uh you know you'll get the advantage of a double team but you still have to hold off the block and as you see watch how this is well executed by you know everyone there but zion johnson did a good job in his own right in making that block so again do i think zion johnson's going to be elite in this league i really don't i don't think he has that kind of potential but to me i've 
I felt very strongly he is a high floor, low ceiling kind of guy. Uh, and even that low ceiling, ceiling probably is a little bit unfair because I think he has at least a decent ceiling. So at least that's what I saw on tape was he was just sort of a good player consistently, which that obviously has a lot of value. So yeah, I mean, the more I think about it, I guess it's not the worst pick in the world. Does this mean that Pipkins is going to be the starting right tackle? He wasn't awful for him last year. Like that's not the worst scenario in the world if that is the case. Uh, but what do you do then? I mean, it, you know, that could be the move. Uh, they do like, you know, they spent a lot of uh, capital now, a lot of resources on that offensive line, obviously, with, you know, uh, when they signed Lindsley last year and then drafted Slater last year, that worked out. I think this one will work out as well, probably, too. So, uh, again, it's very fascinating. I think there's several places people wanted the Chargers to go. Uh, in this draft class. I think people, you know, some people were saying, hey, they still got to bolster that defensive line. Sure, Joseph Day and Johnson are solid. I'm not like mad at either of those two players, but is that really going to move the needle that much if you're going to play cover two or I guess really cover four every single snap? Don't you kind of need someone who can really stop the run? You know, um, you saw how effective that scheme was with Aaron Donald. Every scheme is effective with Aaron Donald, but you saw how much value Aaron Donald brought to a scheme like that, uh, you know, but at the end of the day, it's like, okay, maybe you could have gone Wyatt if you wanted to, but they needed an offensive lineman. They wanted to build that offensive line. They could have even gone wide receiver, try to just make that, you know, core awesome, because obviously Keenan Allen and Mike Williams are great, but they could have gone a third option. But with all these, you know, with this wide receiver run that we've seen so far, that's, you know, an interesting one. So I, I, I like the value. I had Johnson right around here as in terms of like one of my prospects. So I like that stuff for sure. So I have no real issue with this this selection whatsoever. I think it makes some sense in the Chargers. Again, you could argue the Chargers with all the resources they had this offseason. Like, did they get the most out of their resources? That's, I think, a fair debate to be had. But did they get a lot out of their resources? Absolutely. And we've seen plenty of teams like... For example, the Indianapolis Colts, who seemingly have a ton of resources and never do anything with it. It's cool to see them have a lot of resources and do stuff with those resources. So that's what's cool about it. And that's kind of what uh, what I like about this for the uh, Chargers. So again, should be interesting as that offensive line went from horrible Herbert's first year to actually good this year. So uh, even if it is, you know, if, they're, if their offensive line is from left to right, Slater, Feeler, Lindsey, uh, now Johnson and then Pipkins, like that's a good offensive line. So should be an interesting uh, situation for them. That's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts on this move? Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.